Hello and welcome to another video from the only YouTube channel you need to not only survive the current apocalypse but actually enjoy it. And today's little talk is going to be called Slavery Makes a Comeback. Now, I've been working on this for about five months and uh, tried to make a video about a half hour long. I said I wasn't going to do that so I went back and made some notes and split it up into three parts and then uh, five parts and now the, all my notes look somewhat like the uh, Unabomber's manifesto. Probably cover a lot of the same points he had in his. But in any case, I think everybody that subscribes to my channel understands about slavery. They recognize their own level of slavery. But maybe you're not clear on exactly why things have changed. And uh, we're talking about things you've seen in your lifetime. Such as uh, pretty much everybody knows that Everybody in the family has to work now, at least 40 hours. A lot of people are working 70 hours. And really the only reason you're working is for a place to stay, some shelter, and transportation back and forth to work. Now, it'd be nice to have some entertainment thrown in there somewhere, a few nice things to put around your house. But basically, those are the things we need. And you know that during your father's time, that was actually possible. Your father could go to work on his own for 40 hours, bring home enough money that in 30 years his house was paid for, had a pretty nice car, and could actually take a trip every couple of months to go visit his kids that was spread all over the country. That's not going to happen for you. And there's a reason for it. Actually, there's a lot of reasons for it. But as far as the physical world goes, there's one reason we can look at that explains why your situation has changed. Now. Everybody recognizing that they work more and more to support the elitists that own us and this country may think that we simply have more elitists to support now. Might be true, a little bit. Or it could be that the elitists have gotten more greedy. That's obviously possible, but I mean, you look back in the past at a lot of people that ran this world, they had two or three mansions. And, uh, Nowadays, more or less, most uh, of the Congress and the Senate and the state, uh, you know, all the people, Secretary of Treasury, all them people have, you know, I don't know, maybe three or four mansions, private jets, all that kind of foolishness. But the reality is we've always had these guys. We've always had to feed, and feed clothe, and shelter them to an opulent level. But something that has changed is the E-R-O-I. I didn't write it down on here, but it's E-R-O-I. This stands for the Energy Return on Investment. You see, this is an empire. All empires are founded on slavery. All exist because of slavery, and when the slaves disappear for whatever reason, the empire collapses. Now, in the past, what happened was uh, the energy that's, that supplied the empire was actually from the sun. Uh, it fed plants, the plants grew, the slaves ate the plant, and then the physical labor that they put on their back was the energy that supported the society. As the societies grew, people had to go farther and farther away from the centers of the city to grow crops. Uh, you have one or two years where it's uh, poor rainfall and you can't grow crops, people start starving, slaves escape, the empire collapses. Or simply a empire that has more slaves because they have more energy is able to conquer your empire. It happens all the time. And uh, in fact, we're about to experience it ourselves. Now, when we talk about the energy return on in energy investment ratio, here's a, here's a brief history of slavery in this country so you can see how that ratio has changed. Used to be you would just get slaves, go over, well, first try to capture the people that are indigenous to the land and force them into slavery. We already talked about how that didn't work. So uh, the empire started to go overseas and capture people, kidnap them, and bring them to this country and force them to be slaves. And uh, a lot of people think that the Emancipation Proclamation was the part of uh, history where the white man became kinder and saw that it was wrong to enslave people and simply freedom. And that has nothing to do with why the slaves were freed. The reason the slaves were freed is because slavery worked for agricultural processes which helped out the southern states, but they didn't work for manufacturing processes in the northern states. So the country's uh, wealth was shifting from the north to the south. So the north decided to put slavery to an end because they simply could not extract the, their needs 
from slavery, and they wanted to stop the South from having that edge over them. But the Emancipation Proclamation of 1864 did not stop slavery. It simply changed it just a little bit. Because immediately after the slaves were released, all of the young, healthy black males were arrested for vagrancy and forced to go work for farms, a lot of times the same farms they had been freed from, but this time they simply belonged to the state as opposed to the farm owner. Well, when did slavery actually end? To this day it still hasn't, but a perception of slavery that I have and I'm pretty sure it's based on fact, is that slavery went from the ball and chain type of slavery to the slavery we have today because of oil. If you look at history, as oil was discovered and as people figured out how to make machines that would run on oil, slavery kind of went away, or at least it got more mild. What happened was, in the past, you would take a hundred men, chain them together, and make them do a job. But with the discovery of cheap oil, you could actually take one man and chain him to a machine with a paycheck as his chain, and you could get the same amount of work out of him as you could get out of a hundred men in the past. Do you understand what I'm saying? So why, if that's the case, are we seeing ourselves falling back into slavery? This goes right back to that E-R-O-I. That's the energy return on energy investment. And look, if you're going to look this up, and I promise you, you, you won't hurt yourself by doing this, just go to the internet, type that in, E-R-O-I. Now, if you come to a page that says E-R-O-I slash Texaco, or E-R-O-I slash Chevron, or Exxon Mobil, don't bother reading that. Those are propaganda pages. They'll throw so many facts and figures at you that you'll just be dis dis disturbed that you even looked at it to start with. Just go to something like Wikipedia, written by people, just like you and me, People, except these are people in the know, and they explain that the way the oil industry started out was a man in Texas could go out in the yard of a poor person and promise to clean up their yard farm for free, just take him a truck and a bucket and scoop up oils, because at one time oil was actually bubbling to the surface of the earth all over the world. Well, for that little bit of work, the energy investment was basically an oil, a barrel. And look, now when we talk about uh, energy units, that doesn't mean electricity, it doesn't mean oil, it doesn't mean uh, coal, it doesn't mean solar. All of those things are just energy. How much energy can you get out of those things? But to simplify this talk, whenever we talk about a unit of energy, we'll talk about a barrel of oil. Now, we may be talking about solar or the amount of energy a barrel of oil will get you as uh, compared to how much energy you can get out of solar, but our units will be barrels of oil. Back around 1930, one gallon of energy input to have a man with a truck take a bucket, scoop some oil off the ground, take it to a refinery, put it in a gas pump, and get it to the final destination, which could be the consumer or some kind of industry, it took one barrel of oil energy input to extract 100 barrels of oil output. Do you understand that ratio? That's what you call a convenience. That's a convenience. Now, this big oil spill they just had out here in the Gulf of Mexico, I don't know how many people know this, but that, that well was seven miles deep. Seven miles. Now, the reason it was seven miles is because you can't get oil in four miles or five miles or six miles and oil you can get at six miles would just run out pretty quick so you go another mile deeper and just that way you set your machine up one time and get to run it for a while well there's a problem with that the machine which has its limits which is getting that oil out at seven miles down requires humongous amounts of energy to build. Then you have to man it. You know, we're not talking about a man with a bucket anymore. We're talking about a hundred man crew. You know, some of these machines, when you count the people's bringing food out there to them, the people that's transporting them back and forth, the people that's maintaining the machine, the people that's operating the machine, the people that's filling, putting the bits on the, the drill, 
there's a lot of infrastructure that goes into getting oil out of the earth now. And if you remember, back in the days when they were getting oil out of Texas, people would hit what's called gushers. That's where you hit a vein and it just comes out of the ground on its own. Your problem isn't getting it out of the ground. Your, your problem is managing it because it's going to get out of the ground on its own. It's not the way it is now. You actually have to pump, physically pump oil out of the ground. Now it's under a lot of pressure, so the pressure itself brings it up pretty close to the surface. But every day, and that's every day, it takes more energy just to run the pumps to get it out of the ground because it's deeper in the ground. I hope you all are understanding all this. I'm trying to keep it as simple as I can. Maybe later on I'll come back and refine this talk somehow, I don't know. But in any case, it is now, it now takes one barrel of oil to extract three. So when you get these little emails talking about how they just discovered an oil field in Missouri and this town, everybody in the town is getting rich because they're getting paid for the oil and it has 13 billion barrels of oil in it. That's right, 13 billion barrels of oil and I got an email like this yesterday. The fact is, they could send you an email saying, rest assured that the oil industry has found oil on Mars and there's enough oil on Mars to keep your car going for the next one trillion years. Can you imagine the infrastructure necessary to get a, that amount of oil off of Mars? And say we do come up with a machine that can figure out a way to pump every drop of oil out of the earth because there's a lot down there. We've probably hardly touched the amount of oil that is in the earth. But when it, every day it drops deeper and deeper. It was uh, speculated that in 1997, world oil consumption actually depleted 400 years of production by the earth itself. And what person would actually think it's reasonable to collapse the crust of the earth to get energy for an SUV? Oh well, let's see here. Now, in talking about the history of slavery, you have to realize that, that that history is still being written. So what's happening is, it's not that we're losing slaves, it's just that we're losing the only slave magnifier that we have. In other words, you put a man on a machine, he can do the work of a hundred men, but if you got to put a hundred men to work to pump the oil out of the ground to get that machine running, you really haven't had a convenience. Here's a little bit simpler way to explain it. Say you've got a job to do, just one job. You only got to do it once, ain't never going to have to do it again. And you know in your heart that it's going to take you a year to do that job. But you can build a machine that can do the job in one day. Would that be a convenience? Well, how about this? What if it takes you a year to build a machine? See, that's not only not a convenience, but that's actually causing you extra work because you're going to have to spend a year building that machine to do a one-year job and you still got to spend one day doing the job. You understand what I'm saying? Now, if you're thinking about alternative energies, there's a reason that we still use oil and not wind power or solar electric. Uh, a lot of that is because it takes so much energy just to manufacture solar panels that it takes you about 10 years to get a return on your investment. And guess how long solar panels last? 10 years. Now if you go to the solar panel energy and uh, industry and do a little research, they'll tell you solar panels last indefinitely. That is a lie. Uh, all you gotta do is just to look up a few extra pages, you'll find people that actually work on solar panels. In about 10 years, they're down to about half their production, which means that over the next 10 years, they'll be down to zero which means you're totally going to get 10 years worth of energy out of a solar panel that takes basically 10 years of what energy it would produce to make the thing. Now, there are some energies that are usable that uh, have whole promise. One of them is uh, the energy you get from uh, hydroelectric where you build these huge dams. Those things could run on forever and as long as you maintain them, you'll get energy out of them. But the cost of a dam is a lot more than just the energy input to build a thing. Uh, the Three Gorges Dam, it said, displaced one million people. That means their homes, their communities, all of that is underwater now. It just doesn't make sense, even on an energy level, the amount of work that went into moving those people to build a dam like that. Hoover Dam did the same thing. 
when we make decisions about getting energy out of the earth or out of the sun or out of whatever, it all goes back to fossil fuels. Whether you're talking about oil or coal, both are destructive to the environment, both have their limits, and both are running out, regardless of what people say. There will always be oil, but when you get to the point where it takes a barrel of oil to run the machine to get one barrel of oil out, it's game over. But the fact is, as long as those people who are doing this work are doing it for a profit, game over comes way earlier than that, and we're there right now. Where is slavery going? Don't know. But those who run this world know that the gig is up. Uh, they're carrying on wars all around the planet to an unsustainable level to try to maintain their position, their stature as the owners of the planet. There will probably come a day in the very near future when people are rounded up. Not, it ain't going to be going to kidnap somebody from Africa this time. They're going to just go to your house, promise you a free meal and a shower, and you're going to be rounded up and put into a work camp. There's no way around it. It's not that that's going to help. But the elitists right now that run this country are grabbing for straws. The lies they're telling are so ridiculously transparent that it shows the level of their fear. I don't know how to end this. Slavery makes a comeback. Do you understand what I'm talking about? If you don't want to survive, don't listen to me.